Welcome back, everyone, to another round of Gourmet Breaks. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please take a second to do so. Smash that thumbs up button and comment down below to tell me what kind of content you'd like to see in upcoming videos. Folks, it is an exciting day. And if you were curious, yes, this is my excited voice. We're going to be busting open a box of 2019 Topps Allen Ginter. You might wonder why I'm so excited to bust a two-year-old box of Allen and Ginter, and that is for one reason. I know for a fact that there's not going to be one Cedric Mullins card in this entire box. I also know that there's a bunch of notable rookies in this box. We've got Judge, Benatendi, Bregman, Mancata, Bell, and a host of others that you might actually care about. In addition to that, we have our usual weird and wacky inserts that Allen and Ginter is known for. We've got things like dinosaur fossils, cut autographs, the retainer that you lost when you were eight years old, 10 millimeter sockets, my DIY friends will get that joke, as well as Kristen Stewart's personality. All could be in here. Let's go ahead and get into it and see what we've got. Those of you that watched my last video on the retail 2019 Allen & Ginter heard me say that I've never opened a box of retail Allen, I'm sorry, hobby Allen & Ginter. So this is kind of a new one for me. Kind of secretly hoping that I get a rip card. Chase and Donnie Baseball did a great week-long series about ripping those open and while some of you might think that it was better to maybe have kept them closed i don't think you can really replace the the excitement of kind of seeing what you're going to get so here's our box topper it feels thin so already i'm kind of assuming it's not going to be a rip card but i don't know the difference so let's go ahead and find out you might be able to get these autographed. You can already tell that it's a Kershaw. That's nice. Now I don't know if the black border on this is anything significant. Again, I'm just opening this up for the first time. So by all means, comment down below. Let me know if I pull something unique. As usual, I am gonna do a recap video at the end. And I'm going to have a contest. So if you're the kind of person that likes to skip through to see the hits, there is a contest question coming up later. Don't miss it. First pack. We'll say I love how easily these packs come off. They come off about as easy as Kim K's clothes, but, you know, to each his own, I guess. I don't know. Nice looking cards, kind of that feel you come to expect. Look at me not dropping the first mini. So we got our Randy Johnson mini. Not too shabby. All baseball. Mentioned before that, you know, there's a number of people out there that get upset, I guess, that Allen and Ginter has so many non-baseball players but speaking of I kind of feel like nice Chris Bryant so here's one of the weird inserts sport fish and fishing lures interesting no complaints it's a pro far Little does he know his life will improve in just a few years. He'll wind up on my beloved A's. I feel like the people that get mad that they open a box of Allen and Ginter and get, a, you know, a fishing lure card are like the same people that order tacos from Burger King and then get mad that it's not good enough. Like, you, Professor Maddox... Clemens, I feel like you you knew what you were getting, right? 
There's a nice Nolan Ryan. Jonathan H., are you the the Ryan guy? Whoa, hey, this is a family show. We have Bust a Move, Belly Dance. Jeez. Sorry, honey. It, I looked at her eyes. I'm sure she has a nice personality. I mean, you know what you're getting into, right? Like, don't buy the box and then complain later. At least there's not going to be any O'Hearn cards. Pretty sure you're looking at, you know, a Double 2.0 here. Just wound up suspended. Hate to, you know, besmirch a good man. Here, Battle of Bunker Hill. If you look closely, you can see Charlie Huff in the background. Older collectors will get that joke. Nice A's mini. You know what you're getting into. Don't be one of those guys. Hope everyone's week is going well. Sadly, I am counting down the days before I must return to work. Don't know this guy. Is that a... So right off the bat, you can see the different backs. I'm going to have to Google you, sir. Although from the looks of it, you might be on your way to court. I don't know if your life took a turn for the worse somewhere. Oh, Stephen A. A brief moment in history that he's not screaming at somebody. Self-help book might help. I don't know. I'm liking it so far. I do like these World's Fair history-related type cards. Jenkins Mini with the Allen and Ginter back. Probably helps if I put it in there. Hey! There's Puig on one of the 57 teams. He's going to start a fight, I'm sure, within this box at some point. Let the kids play. You Darvish, Tanaka, Gardner. I love Gardner. If you've been following along, I don't know if he is just a master of the deadpan sarcasm, but watching him defend himself for being kicked out of the game for his now infamous bashing the dugout roof with his bat, and then, this is a Ben Attendee rookie, and then pretending like he had no clue why he got kicked out of the game is hysterical. That is assuming that it's a joke. If not, he probably needs anger management classes. One of New York's savages. Great rant. Swanson, rookie card. Another Dawson. We pulled Dawson out of prison the other day. Really did enjoy the conversation that I had with a number of you uh, regarding veterans versus uh, new players. Like it, not like it. Uh, Fuzzy Wuzzy, I believe it was you. Hey, this is interesting. I was not aware that there were, I guess, buyback style cards in here. Some of you don't like it. Maybe it, you know, takes a little bit of the focus off of some of the newer guys, which I can understand. Newsboy dude. Interesting little guy there. Look at his face. It's like he's trying to hold in a fart or something. He's not going to make it. 
Rafael Ramirez, Rediscover Tops. I really like these cards. I know it's been mentioned a bunch of times. I'm definitely not the first one to bring it up, but very difficult to pull a non commons Rediscover Tops card. I did have my eye on a Maguire. I believe it was an 89 Tops Rediscover card. Uh, not only a card that I really like, but also, you know, hard to find a good player in the Rediscover Tops. Another Fish card. Winfield. LaForce. No clue. William Shatner. How do you not love William Shatner? I mean, he's no Picard, but uh, he did his job well. Anywho, veteran players making a, a resurgence in, in modern stuff. I kind of like, simply for the fact that, you know, if you're a, a Mantle fan, Willie Mays fan, there's Josh Bell, rookie, before he started ripping the cover off the ball. Another future A's player, current, uh, you know, rookie A's at the time. There's a Bregman rookie. Man, this pack has just got me all kinds of distracted. There's a black border, David Wright, normal back. I don't know how many variations of different parallels you can have in one, but uh, I know these were supposedly, at least in 2019, more difficult to pull than a gold border. The fans of older players, uh, how are you ever going to get, you know, a, a Willie McCovey card out of a pack? I mean, I guess you could go on BBC and spend $1,000 to get, you know, a mid-70s pack of cards. But short of doing that, you will never again have the experience of pulling an old player out of a pack of cards again. Now, I do understand the argument of nice chipper. The argument of when it's overdone, hey, got our first relic card, not to be overshadowed by this amazing fish lure card. Longoria, Relic, a Mini that I was about to drop. He would have yelled at me for that. Nice Evan Longoria Relic card. There's three hits in this box. A couple of Relics, probably, hopefully an autograph. I, I agree that if, you know, one in every three cards is a veteran player can't see this but they made this guy stand on a box just to be able to you know be tall enough for the picture it does water down kind of the effect of seeing an old player so i could understand you know maybe doing it more as an sp kind of a thing hey another throwback and just when i said that we were all getting comments here we got a denny walling you know what would this even... I don't even know at this time. The 13th year card. Lucky number. It's just when he was hitting his stride. Which, as I say that as a joke, I actually noticed that he did hit 304 that year. How's this guy not in the hall? Just another example of politics. Keeping good people out. Uh, I could see Tops, you know, maybe doing it more as an SP so that you're not overwhelmed with old people. But Johnny Bench, arguably the best catcher ever. And if you're the kind of person that tries to get their kids involved in this, it's just a name to them, right? Like, there's only so many... This guy's up to something. That's the look of mischief.
Now, I believe this is a, is that bronze, copper? I don't even know, but the colors of the rediscovered tops are going to be different. Uh, something else to kind of keep track of, just to kind of put it into perspective. So you can definitely tell. If you only got one in the pack, you might kind of gloss over that and not really notice. Anyway, back to my other rant. For a kid, you know, trying to explain to them, you know, Hank Aaron's significance in, in home runs or Johnny Bench in, in relation to other catchers, they don't really have any connection to them. So I could see putting those players in current product is maybe a way to expose them to uh, some of the older players. That's just me. Chris Sale. Pre-injury. Fish card. This witch. Magicians. In the lowest form of humanity. Unbelievable. Earn an honest living, sir. So that's my that's my two cents on old players and current cards. The only thing that I will say that I could see doing without would be the relatively newly retired people in current cards. I kind of feel like, you know, a Jeter or an Ichiro, somebody who hasn't been out of the sport for very long. It Give it a break, you know, like let some nostalgia build up a little bit before you start putting them back in cards. I don't know. That's how I feel about that. But one of my favorite cards that I've pulled this year since returning to the hobby was a triple relic out of Heritage Low Number. And it was a Reggie Jackson, Mark McGuire, and Chris Davis relic card, hand numbered to 25. I about lost my mind. I, I may have even smiled. It's a rare occurrence. The nice Aaron Judge rookie card. Very nice. I think he's hit one home run in the last 28 games, but you don't need to nitpick. Biscotti, another future A's star. Jay Glazer, if you're not familiar with Jay Glazer, another Nolan Ryan card for somebody who likes Nolan Ryan, whose name is escaping me, Jonathan H. If it was you, comment down below. Jay Glazer, if you're not familiar with Jay Glazer, Jay Glazer is well known in the MMA community, which I've been involved in since all the way back until 2002, before it was cool to pretend to be involved in MMA. I've had a few amateur fights, professional fight, um kind of hesitated into talking too much about it uh, on the channel or, you know, opening UFC cards, partly because I've actually either trained with or met a number of those people. Oh, Mr. Gray. Um, so I, I, I actually know them and I do feel feel like it's a little bit awkward uh, collecting cards of them. Also, it's Jackie. I also feel like if you've ever had conversations with people about a, a sport or an activity, a hobby of some kind that you are pretty deep into, um, it can just quite honestly be a little bit frustrating at times. The nice Simeon. 
some people have pretty strong opinions. Styling and profiling. Couldn't even be bothered to button his top jersey button. Um, can be a little bit frustrating at times. People do develop. This is an early iteration of a bee catcher's outfit. Not terribly protective, as you might imagine. Oh, Freddie. So, kind of resisted focusing on it or getting too involved in it. However, if you find yourself sitting there right now going, man, I love MMA. I would love to talk about... Yes, Dave Steeb. Sorry. Got a little... <laughs> Sorry, guys. Got a little excited there. And a little excited there. Check out the ERA. 409 and 87. Told you guys before in the steroid era, it wasn't uncommon that, you know, teams would score 75, 80 runs a game. Makes you think that guy's pretty good, doesn't it? So if you find yourself sitting there right now going, I'm an MMA fan, I'd love to talk about MMA. Lumberjack dude. God, this card just reeks of toxic masculinity. It's all right. Look at this guy. This is the CrossFit. Have you ever pushed a stroller around Disneyland in 100 degree weather? I think not, sir. What about chased a slippery three-year-old around the house while simultaneously dodging Legos left in the carpet. Teach you a thing or two about CrossFit, sir. Oh, Dave Steeb. If MMA is your thing, and you'd like to see me ramble on, give you my strong opinion on all things related to MMA, comment down below. Drink some kava, maybe calm myself down a few woosahs, and uh, could go into it. Now, this is a weird one for me, folks. Now... You know I'm an A's fan, started off as a kid, Mark McGuire fan, and you guys probably have your, your players that you were a fan of when you were young, and when you see them in a uniform, other than the way that you kind of remember them as a kid, it's, it's weird. I mean, I know, you know, the significance of the home runs and, and all that as a Cardinal, but when I picture Mark McGuire, I picture that 1987, that 1988 cup card, you know, wearing the green and gold. When I see him in a Cardinals uniform, it, it does not hold the same kind of intrinsic, uh, the emotional response you get when you pull a card of your favorite player. I don't know what it is. I've been sort of shopping around for a Maguire autograph, and most collectors know that, uh, ooh, very nice. Most collectors, Battle of Long Island. This was the original Jersey Shore battle. Jim over here, Tan over here. Who's going to win? I don't know. And a lot of the a lot of the current cards are, you know, there's they're loaded with autographs, as we're about to find out here in a second. So it's pretty easy to find a Maguire autographed card in recent card products, but they're all with him in a Cardinals uniform. And honestly, when I see them, I just boom skip to the next one. It does not hold any interest to me. I don't know what it is. I mean other than the obvious of him not being in an A's uniform. But it's weird to kind of turn it on and off. I mean, I guess we could ask Nationals fans about how they feel about Bryce Harper now, and they'd probably get the reference. But 
I don't know. McGuire belongs in an A's uniform. That's just the way that I feel about it. Hank Aaron Mini, and boom, Jay Glazer, Mr. MMA. Just got done ranting about him. We have a mini framed Jay Glazer auto. Blue ink. Not numbered. At least I don't believe so. Some of these cards kind of come with an assumed number. Uh, you guys know what I mean. For instance, there might be, you know, 200 of these and you just kind of need to understand it. Alan Ginter does not have the best reputation as far as making sure that their inserts actually got inserted. Um, but it's a nice looking card. I guess he would qualify as a as a non-sport, although it is, you know, sports related, uh, non-baseball kind of category. Let me know, guys. I mean, obviously I can look it up, but feel free to comment down below about the desirability of this card or or these kind of non-baseball autos. It's a cool looking card. I could see it getting damaged though. It's kind of, you know, obviously it doesn't fit tightly in there. I like it. I'll take it. Got four packs to go. We should still have one relic card left. Did he like shave to bust out of a slump? Is he, you know, trying to be runner up lumberjack dude? Kind of odd. Put him with his uh, relic though. Hey, there we go. Okay. I don't know. You could tell from, you know, the, the sound of my voice, not exciting to me, very exciting to me. This is, this is me when I'm, you know, eight years old. This is me excited seeing McGuire on my favorite team, wearing 25. Nice card. Finish that pack off. It's it's just weird. I mean, I know it's the same person. I know it's the same guy. I, don't, I just don't know what it is. And, and the same thing kind of holds true. I'd mentioned in another video that I was a big Frank Thomas fan when he was early uh, with the White Sox. And... Later on in his career, he he would have a very short stint with Oakland. Other than the novelty of him being on my team, I mean, it was not the Frank Thomas, you know, from the early 90s when he made it his way to Oakland. I still, our relic is going to be in here. I still only associate Frank Thomas in his White Sox uniform. I know it's a little bit of a plot twist, but I actually don't really care for him in the A's uniform. Hey, Bryce Harper relic card. Can't really consider myself a Bryce Harper fan. That is interesting. I know he's a polarizing figure. A lot of people cannot stand the guy. He's got, you know, a little bit of, you know, kind of a, a, a douchiness about him. Let me see. Yeah, even the relic, you know, smells like it's been drenched in cool water. It's just that kind of guy. Uh, but I want to say just earlier in the week, MLB.com rated him as the most clutch hitter 
in 2019, you know, which I guess if your if your stats can outweigh your personality, that should count for something. I believe when I was a kid, I used to think that the T stood for the Tiffany version of cards, although I do believe it's just the tops traded. Um, the back is always different on these older cards. You could tell that's definitely like a more crisp, brighter coloring. Um, when I get to it, I do believe that the the card was a little glossier. Just now realizing that he is from just a few minutes away from where I live. Nice Chris Davis. Looking rather smug. I don't say so myself. The wizard. Nice Russell cards for days. Maybe noticing all these Cubs cards. Whitey Ford. Probably not really a name you could get away with today. Joey Votto. I don't know about you guys, if you've ever seen any Joey Votto antics, it seems like a, uh, a fellow connoisseur of the sarcasm dry humor. Probably get along with that guy. Oh, Alex Sanchez. I do believe that is another of the bronze version. We're down to our last pack. We already got all of the hits. So other than finding something for me to make a wisecrack about, I don't know really what's left. That's why you all came. I do appreciate that many of you can stomach my sense of humor. Sarcasm is definitely an acquired taste. It's one of the many services I provide for my fans. Another fish card. It would have been sad if I would made it through the last pack without one of these. Some Canadian struggling to open a bottle. Typical of Canadians. Maybe they can just ask America for help. And Reyes. I'm going to go back through these folks, uh, pull out anything that I missed, let you know what you may have missed, and I will be back with my contest challenge question. Hold tight. Don't flush, otherwise people will wonder what you're still doing in there. Okay, folks, I'm back with a brief recap. In the background, you can see that we pulled just about every notable rookie out of this 2017 box. One of our hits was the Jay Glazer mini framed auto. The Bryce Harper relic. Our Evan Longoria relic. I don't believe either of these were numbered. No, none of those are numbered. We pulled four rediscover tops cards and it, as you can kind of see by the coloring i do believe that's two bronze and then two silver i might be wrong about that sanchez steve ramirez and walling uh obviously we're kind of keeping along with that theme that most of them are going to be commons two black bordered minis Sticking with minis, we have the six uh, Allen and Ginterback minis, and one of which being a high number SP, you can see 328. Anything over 301 is considered an SP.
Nothing terribly uh, exciting in there. Two of our minis are high number SPs. And see 304 and 317 make them SPs. And going on to the full size SPs, again, these are all over 301. That's McCovey, Lester. Probably helps if you can see the name. And then we got our usual assortment of kind of weird inserts. We also had our Kershaw. Uh, I don't know if it's significant that it's black bordered or not, but uh, looks like he's in like a cemetery. I don't know if that's indicative of you know his career. And lastly, our trivia question. Now, I will say A's fans will have a, a little bit of an advantage here, but, you know, that's what the rest of you get for picking the wrong team. Somebody tell me what's wrong with this card. First one to comment down below. I will send you this card, and I will send you a pack of the 2019 Topps National Baseball Card Day cards. Comment down below. Tell me what's wrong with this card. That's going to do it for another round of Gourmet Breaks. And remember, commons are people too.